Hello, everybody. Thank you for watching The Political Vigilante. You're all making Gotham great again. This article was submitted by Lauren D'Alessandro, who's been supporting the show from early on. Lauren, thank you so much. We very much appreciate it, guys, at the $5 level. You get to send fun articles like this. Half of American renters struggle with the unaffordable housing costs, the study finds. I did another video about Proposition 10 in California. Something, if you live in California, vote yes on Prop 10 because it protects rent control and allows cities to add rent control that don't already have it. Rich developers and real estate assholes are trying to tell you that Prop 10 is bad. It's obviously just bad for them and their greedy pocketbooks, but vote yes on 10. This is a national issue, but it's very relevant here in California. This is all over the country. So as more members of the middle class have chosen to rent instead of becoming homeowners, the average national rent has soared with housing costs rising across the U.S., particularly in costly urban markets clustered around the coast. One consequence of this renting boom is that households that rent have become increasingly burdened by higher costs. In a report published this week, Apartment List analyzed publicly available census data to determine how the cost burden of rents has shifted over the past decade. So... I'll go into what they found in a second. The past, so what happened was when all the foreclosures happened after the, the crash of 2008, my home being one of them, um, these companies bought up all these foreclosed homes and started renting them. And they keep jacking up the rents and jacking up the rents. And as we've seen in this country, oh, the economy's doing great. Yeah, for the 1%, it's doing. The economy's doing great for the 1%. So here's what they found. While well, the percentage of U.S. renters who qualify as cost burdened, i.e. those who spend more than 30% of their total income on rent, has ticked lower since peaking in 2014. It currently stands at 49.5%. Jesus. 50% of U.S. renters, 50% of U.S. renters are spending 30% or more of their monthly income on rent. The total number of cost burden renters has increased by more than 3 million since 2007. Right? Red is severely burdened and these are moderately burdened. But this just shows you we're right at 50%. 10, 11. Oh, it's come down a little bit. It's just below 50%. Wow, yay. What a switch. This is a horrifying news. This is why 60% of Americans don't have $1,000 in savings. And guess where they're all at? <clears throat> Major cities, Chicago, New York, California, cities in Texas, and Florida. One in three cost burden renters live in California, New York, or Florida. Look at the middle of the country, too. This is rough, man. This is rough. The Democrats, something Hedges said, the Democrats ran on actual populist platforms, actually ran on them. They'd never lose. They gave all these people good wages and good jobs and free health care and put in, you know, renting le legislation to put in rent control, you know, help working people rather than help the 1%. This would be... You give people jobs and health care and college and decent homes and a chance at upward mobility, they'll buy into your social issues way more. You want to cure racism? Give everybody a fucking good job. Then, they're more, then they'll listen to different points of view. You take away those jobs and call them deplorable and stupid, then they're going to run to a goddamn demagogue, rapey Nazi. That's what they're going to do. The shortage of affordable housing in areas of economic opportunity remains one of the most pressing economic struggles facing U.S. renters. And while signs of softness are beginning to emerge in the housing market, evidenced by a slump in home sales, many middle-class renters, burdened as they are by an aggregate $1.5 trillion in student loans. The student loan bubble is something Lauren D'Alessandro has brought to the show. We've talked about it. 
There's a student loan bubble, there's a housing bubble, there's a car loan bubble. What happens when all these people, when the recession hits, where is everyone gonna go, what's everyone gonna do? Oh, and as Mitchell Health told us, by 2040, oh, the coasts are gonna be flooded, so a third of the population is gonna have to come inland. What? What? We need real leaders, not greedy oligarch assholes. Needs to, this, is, this is nuts. Americans are already drowning in debt and unwilling and unable to take out a mortgage. It's probably because of the avocado toast. It's got to be because of the avocado toast. It certainly isn't because of this. It's these millennials. This is where they bought so much avocado toast. That's the problem. This is a big avocado toast area. Yep, a lot of avocado toasters in Texas here in Oklahoma. Florida's a big avocado toast place. Stop buying the toast, you guys. Then you can buy a home. You know what I mean? Guys, go to Patreon. I'm going to give you a free avocado toast if you become a Patreon supporter. I don't know how I would ship that, but just assume you're going to get it. Um, no, Graham Elwood made a false claim. Ha ha, I'm an avocado toast grifter. It's my toast griff. Support the show, you guys. Go to patreon.com. Also, grahamelwood.com for all my tour dates. Stay in your lane comedy, October 20th. Progressive Comedy Tour with Ron Placone, November 2nd and 3rd in Northern California. And Progressive Comedy Tour comes to Florida January 9 through 12. Go to grahamelwood.com. Like and subscribe. We got over 10,000 subscribers, you guys. It's awesome, and it's all because of you. Thank you so much. You made Gotham great again. Bow, bow, bow.